The Senate will reconvene in our virtual format. Madam Secretary, any communications or reports, please? Madam President, communications from the clerk of the House. The House wishes to inform the Senate that it has passed Senate Bill Number 120, Senate Bill Number 169 with Senate Amendment 1, Senate Bill Number 194, Senate Bill Number 242, Senate Bill Number 260. Request of sponsorship. To Joy Bauer, Secretary of the Senate from Rich Puffer, Chief Clerk of the House, date June 25th, 2020. Representative Valerie Longhurst respectfully requests her name be added as House co-sponsor of Senate Bill 191. Thank you for your attention to this request. Please do not hesitate to contact me should you have any questions. Madam President, this concludes the reading of the communication from the House. Thank you, Mr. Assistant Secretary. Madam Secretary, any additional communications or reports? Not at this time, Madam President. Thank you. At this time, then we will uh, turn to our Senate Majority Leader, Senator Nicole Poor. Thank you, Madam President. At this time, I move the Senate adjourn until Tuesday, the 30th of June at 1036 p.m. The Senate is adjourned. The Senate will come to order. Members and virtual guests, uh, join us, please, in an attitude of prayer. And I'm pleased to mention that this evening, our prayer will be offered by Senator Ernesto Lopez. After that, you'll be joining me in our Pledge of Allegiance. Senator? Madam President, thank you. Senator, let us bow our heads. Lord, we come to you tonight with great humility and thanks for your love, grace, and patience. In a world where there is so much more for us to understand, give us the discernment we need today and tomorrow so that those who seek justice will be heard those who seek shelter will be housed, and those who are sick, the healing they need. The healing we all need as a state and as a nation. For as you told us in the book of Matthew, love your neighbor as yourself. Lord, tonight we especially thank you for members of our Senate family who are retiring after years of dedicated and faithful service. We thank you for Joy Bauer, David Burris, and Senator Harris McDowell. We especially thank you for their parents who instilled in each of them a love for public service. We thank you for Joy's mother, Pat, who worked in the state Senate chamber, for David's father, John, and great-grandfather, John, both of whom served in the General Assembly, and for Harris McDowell Sr., a state Senator who went on to be our Congressman their love of Delaware carried on to the next generation. And for that, Lord, we as members of that same Senate family are grateful. Be with us now as we begin the work before us tonight. Enable us to listen so all may be heard. In the name of your precious son, Jesus, amen. Join me in our pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Secretary, would you kindly take attendance roll call? Senator Panini. Here. Here. Senator Brown. Present. Present. Senator Cloutier. Present. Present. Senator Del Colo. Present. Present. Senator Ennis. Senator Ennis. Senator Ennis, you are still muted. He did indicate present as presiding officer. I will take his motion as present, ma'am. Senator Ennis, present. Senator Hansen? Here. Here. Senator Hawker? Present. Present. Senator Lawson? Present. Present. Senator Lockman? Here. Here. Senator Lopez? Here. Here. Senator McBride? Here. Here. Senator McDowell? Here. Here. Senator Pardee? Here. Here. Senator Pettyton? Present. Present. Senator Poor? Here. Here. 
Senator Richardson. Present. Present. Senator Sokola. Here. Here. Senator Sturgeon. Here. Here. Senator Townsend. Here. Here. Senator Walsh. Present. Present. Senator Wilson. Senator Wilson, you are muted, sir, but I am also taking your uh, presence and your notation as noted as present. Madam, as presiding officer, thank you. Senator Wilson, present. Madam President, the attendance, roll call, 21 present. The quorum being present, this virtual session of our session of June 30th is hereby being recorded. And Madam Secretary, would you kindly um, read in for our record any minutes of our previous day? June 25th, 2020, convened 305. Senator Poor. Thank you, Madam President. I move so much be considered the reading of the minutes. So moved, ma'am. Senator Poor, back to you. Thank you, Madam President. At this time, I'm going to yield to Senator Hawker. Senator Hawker. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to have uh, read in its entirety a tribute to David Burris. So noted, Mr. Assistant Secretary, would you kindly read in the tribute of entirety for our friend, Mr. David Burris? State of Delaware Senate tribute. Be it hereby known to all that the entire membership of the Senate of the 150th General Assembly joins Senate Minority Leader Gerald W. Hawker, sponsor, in paying tribute to David M. Burris. In recognition of his distinguished service to the Delaware State Senate as Chief of Staff for the Senate Min Minority Caucus as he prepares to depart. The Senate commends David for his outstanding efforts and for his numerous contributions to the work of this body as Chief of Staff to the Senate Minority Caucus since the 16th day of November, 2015. His service to the Delaware State Senate continues a long and honorable family tradition of service. His father, John M. Burris, served as a member of the House of Representatives from 1976 to 1982. His great grandfather, John W. Burris, was a member of the Delaware House of Representatives from 1932 to 1934 and of the State Senate from 1950 to 1954. While we would like to be able to say that David's service to the Senate included the most memorable moments of any in his family line, this would not be true. His great grandfather Burris achieved that distinction on the 30th day of August, 1954, when the Senate met in special session during the gubernatorial administration of J. Caleb Boggs to consider a number of gubernatorial nominations, including several important judgeships. The Senate then had a slight Republican majority, including Senator Burris, who had recently suffered from a stroke and remained under medical care, suffering from its after effects. Unfortunately, because of the death of a Republican Senator the year before and Senator Burris's stroke, the Senate majority did not have enough votes to confirm the nominees without his vote. So he was brought to Legislative Hall from his summer home in Rehoboth Beach by ambulance and carried into the Senate chamber on a stretcher. According to the next morning's Wilmington Morning News, once Senator Burris, who suffered a stroke several months ago and had only recently been released from the hospital, was carried into the Senate chamber, it took only four minutes for the Senate to confirm unanimously. Three judicial nominees and 35 interim appointees made by the governor since the end of the regular General Assembly session. It turned out that his vote wasn't needed because the vote was unanimous, but no one knew that in advance. Happily, Senator Burris went on to live another 11 years, passing away in 1965 at the age of 70. And so, while David's time with us was not perhaps as exciting as the time his great grandfather spent here, it has been nonetheless memorable. We extend all best wishes to him for success in the future. The Senate approves this tribute for presentation to David on this 30th day of June, 2020. Signed, David B. McBride, President Pro Tempore, 
Joyce C. Bauer, Secretary of the Senate, Senator Gerald W. Hawker, Minority Leader, Sponsor, Additional Sponsors, All Senators. Madam President, this concludes the reading of the tribute of David M. Burris in full. Tribute is uh, before the Senate, Senator Hawker, and I believe there's probably some of your colleagues that wish to speak. Go ahead, Senator. Thank you, Madam President. I want to take this to just thank Dave for what he's meant to our caucus the last four and a half years, how prepared he always was, and just uh, being a true friend. And if Without objection, I'd like to take a couple minutes and elaborate on the Burris family, what they have meant to small business in the state of Delaware. Please do, sir. Okay. Uh, the Burris family, you've you read in his tribute or heard in his tribute how much they have meant to the state of Delaware through their legislative uh, service, but they have meant an awful lot to the business of, of the state of Delaware. Back in, I'd like to use myself for an example and an illustration. Back in 1971, when my wife and I went into business, we went into business with nothing. We didn't have enough cash to even put in the cash drawers when we started. The Burris family was a huge supplier to me. All my meats, hanging beef, produce, all that came through the Burris family. Many times I called Dave's grandfather and asked if he would extend my credit. I didn't have the money to pay him. And every time he says, pay me when you can. And the next order was delivered. And then, you know, we got on our feet. We were able to pay our bills on time. But, uh, a few years later, I had a tornado come through and it ripped a evaporator off the roof, which controlled my whole frozen food operation. I was about to lose all the frozen food in the store. I called Jack Burris. I called him Jack. That's what he wanted to be called. And he became a friend. I said, Jack, I've got a problem. I said, I just lost the evaporator that ran my whole frozen food in the store. I could lose it all. He said, we don't have a problem. And within 45 minutes, he had a reefer at my store that handled all my frozen and put in that trailer full of diesel fuel to start. He said, all you got to do is call me when you're done and we'll come get it. I called him. I said, send me a bill. He said, there will be no bill. That's what kind of family the Burris is. And Dave, I assume you'll probably go back to work for that family. And I know you'll carry on the same as not only your grandfather, but your uncle Bob. They meant so much to me being in business and not only me, but an awful lot of other small business. Thank you and thank your, and we thanks to your family. Thank you, Senator. Um, again, I don't know if other members wish to make comments at this time. And if so, I think Senator, you said it well for the moment. I know individually uh, we'll be certainly thanking him and uh, his family. If you don't see others, oh, Senator Lawson, sir. Are you, oh, you're just, you popped up here. Okay, um, we will go, continue. Um, Senator Patty John. Uh, thank you, Madam President. And I, I have to note that uh, Mr. Burris is not showing on the screen as of yet. So uh, if, if it's okay with the presiding officer, I'd like for him to, I'd like for, to request that Mr. Burris turn on his camera at least uh, so we can see him. There he is. <clears throat> Dave, I've got to say that, um, you know, Gerald said, uh, you know, a, a lot of what we're all thinking. Uh, you know, we, we spoke to you earlier on today uh, about the positive impact that you've had to our caucus. Um, you know, the staff that we have here now, uh, what they're able to do and how they're able to do it is a direct result from your leadership. And, and Dave, I just want to thank you for that. And thank you for your years of service to, to us uh, and to the cause. And we will definitely be seeing you and hearing from you in the future. Great, thank you. And we're gonna to go to Senator McDowell. And while doing that, um, I'm gonna let um, Senator Poor and McBride know we're gonna adjust my uh, microphone. I understand it's difficult for some of you to hear me, but um, Senator McDowell, we're gonna to go to you, sir. Thank you. I just wanna briefly say, I uh, knew the uh, father, father and grandfather, Urus, uh, both were fine gentlemen. Uh, always good to be around and uh, 
always willing to share a, a story or a joke or a, uh, uh, a little jibe sometime, particularly with the, the John Burris that was the speaker that I knew. So uh, I'm uh, happy to just add my comments to what a wonderful family and uh, best of luck to you. Let's see. Go on. Madam President. Madam President, if I if I may make a comment. Um, if you can now, can you hear me? Yes, Senator Pardee, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can, Madam President. I'd, okay. I'd like to make a comment. Yes, you may, and uh, thank you. We were just checking the audio here. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I'd, I'd like to make a comment about uh, really about the Burris family and about uh, and about the uh, about Jack Burris, the the grandfather. Um, when I was a young man, uh, shortly after I got out of college, I got involved with the Boy Scouts, and I'd been an Eagle Scout, and I became involved in the district committee, and somehow found myself in charge of this fundraiser, which I ended up running for several years. But that first year, I was, I don't know, 22, 23 years old. I, I really didn't know anybody. I'd been given this list of names, and one of those names is Jack Burris, and I, and I reached out to him, and he offered to have lunch with me. And I met with him at Captain John's restaurant, which is in, in Dover. And, and as a young man, um, 22, 23 years old, to have an opportunity to meet with Jack Burris, who at that time was probably in his late 70s, early 80s. And this man was, you know, truly a, a you know, a legend you know, a, a captain of industry in, in Delaware. And for him to take the time uh, to meet with me and, and he helped me put that, that dinner together and, and helped me um, make connections through the business community. And, and he made phone calls for me and, 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 and really, um, you know, that, that, that dinner that we put together that year probably wouldn't have happened, uh, at least not to the scale that, that it happened that year without him, with, without his credibility, without him getting behind me, getting behind the event. Um, and, and after that, you know, I, I sort of learned the ropes because of that experience. And, and for several years after that, we, we had some, some other very successful events, but um, I'll, never, I'll never forget that. And, and what an incredible, um, opportunity it was for me to, um, you know, at that age to be 22, 23 years old and, and have a private lunch with, with Jack Burris. Um, you know, he was just an in incredible man, um, as was his son, John, and, and uh, you know, really, really the whole family. And uh, the, the Burris family has just always been uh, first class people um, a family that has given back to uh, the Milford community, but, but the whole state. And um, so I, uh, you know, I want to congratulate uh, Dave uh, on, uh, you know, on his retirement and, and thank him uh, for his service to the state and, and thank uh, the entire Burris family for for what they have meant to Kent County, to the city of Milford, and indeed the entire state. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, Senator Del Colo, your hands up. Thank you, uh, Madam President. I would like to just speak briefly, which I know is a surprising thing to those of us listening in and on the screen, but I just wanted to speak briefly and make two observations about Dave Burris, who, uh, you know, in my relatively brief tenure in the Senate has been the chief of staff, uh, but so much more than that. Dave, I have to say that it could never be said of you that uh, whenever you were relied upon for advice or whenever I asked you for your perspective on a policy issue or an analysis that would always shown through was your wisdom and a commitment to doing what was right and to drawing conclusions and to me, forming opinions that were based on what was best for Delaware. And that's something that is a rare commodity in any endeavor. And I think that's quite remarkable because 
at least from my perspective where I sit, even though we all have our political philosophies, the thing about Dave to me was always that he was truly a straight shooter and said, this is what appears to me to be the best path forward. And sometimes even in ways that aren't entirely uh, the most conservative or the most right of center thing to believe. But I think that that commitment is what makes Dave so special and so important and why he's left such a mark because he really puts what's best for Delaware first. And that comes through in the wisdom and sedacity that he shared with us. So I just wanted the record to reflect that. I think uh, that Dave, I think you are an excellent role model. Uh, you certainly have been that for me as, uh, as a resident millennial in this body, sort of like being a new senator and navigating through all of this, you know, I think, uh, I think my hat's off to you and I can't thank you enough for everything you've meant to, uh, to all of us. Thanks, Dave. And thank you, Madam President. Thank you all. Um, obviously a cherished member of the Senate. I do not see any other hands raised at this time. Senator Madam Hopper, President, yes. Oh, Madam, sorry, Senator McBride, thank you. Senator and I think Biden. Senator Cloutier also want to say, Madam President, uh, very briefly, um, as President Pro Tem, I have had the occasion on numerous occasions to work with and consult with David on a number of issues. Um, I have found him to be a very polite and respectful gentleman and uh, always conducted himself very professionally and has helped me on many occasions in uh, part of my What happened? What happened? If you would bear patience with us, please. Uh, we will get reconnected. Thank you. Everyone play, stay in place. We are waiting for um, Senator McBride to rejoin us while we do. Um, just want to remind all members, if you are not speaking to mute yourselves, and we will wait for our senator to rejoin. If there is an issue, we will proceed to Senator Cloutier until he can return. And our Senate pro tem is uh, rejoining at this time. We'll give him a few more seconds and we'll proceed. Bear with us just a couple more minutes. While we're waiting for him to rejoin, we apologize, Mr. Burris, in the middle of your warm thanks. Uh, we're going to go to Senator Cloutier, and they're going to also be working on my mic, as I understand I'm a little garbled. Senator Cloutier, are you able to speak now, ma'am? Yes. I want to give Dave a huge thanks for all he's done for me and wish him the best on his new chapter of his life, and he will be missed. I don't know if that one. 
one moment. Is that your physical headphones? Senator Cloutier, are you finished? Yes. Thank you. We appreciate it. We are, are having the joys of the virtual world here between IT and all. Um, thank you, ma'am, for that. And we are waiting for um, our Senator McBride to come in. In the meantime, Senator Townsend has raised his hand. Senator Townsend. So I'm just happy to add, add a couple quick thoughts and appreciate everything Dave has, has done. I think Senator McBride was in the middle of saying it, the, the demeanor and professionalism with which you've conducted yourself as members of the other caucus have interacted with you. Um, has been has been stellar, uh, dare I say, enjoyable even at times. Um, didn't always translate to some of your members, and I, I appreciate your efforts to always work on that. Uh, but I do think, as I understand it, you've done a fantastic job, and Senator Nicola referenced this a little bit, um, of giving really good insight and guidance along the way in, in a way that you know, either caucus at times can, can step into something. And um, it's very clear that there are times that you help guide things in a very productive direction. So that has, wasn't go, didn't go unnoticed, um, as much as it might not be noticed to people outside the building and how things might operate. Certainly it was noticed inside the building um, and that, that certainly will be missed. Um, and if you have any tips on your way out about how to try and corral Senator Benini, please just like write them down, slide them under a door, whatever. Uh, I, think, I think the whole world will be better off if you can please, sh please share some pearls of wisdom on that front, I appreciate it. But good luck to you, thank you for your service. Um, to Delaware, to your caucus, and, and therefore to Delaware. It has been a pleasure. Thank you. Good luck with that. Thank you, uh, Senator Townsend. I understand Senator McBride has rejoined us. Senator McBride. Madam President, and, thank you. Yes. Uh, for some reason, I lost service, but I, I had completed my remarks, and uh, I'm, I'm going to miss David, and I had very much enjoyed working with him. That'll conclude my remarks, Madam President. Thank you, uh, Senator McBride. Senator Hawker, if you have no other words, we're going to, um, again, wish uh, Mr. Burris well, and uh, we'll proceed from Senator Hawker to Senator Poor when you're ready. Senator Hawker. Thank you, Madam President. We're done. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Senator Poor, back to you, ma'am. Thank you, Madam President. At this time, I am going to yield um, to Senator McBride. Senator McBride. Senator McBride, you're muted, sir. Madam President, uh, thank you so much. Tonight, I have asked uh, that Governor Carney join us, and I don't know if he has joined the Zoom yet. Is the governor with us yet? Yes. He is here. He should be uh, logging in, Senator, he should be logging in right now. Okay. What, what I'm going to do, Madam President, as the governor uh, logs in, if I might, I would like to request that Senate Resolution Number 32 be brought before the Senate for consideration. I would then request that it be read in its entirety, and then uh, perhaps, if it's uh, appropriate and and uh, you're okay with that, uh, I'd like the governor to say a few words. Certainly, sir. We, all right, thank you. Certainly, sir. And in the meantime, we'll go ahead and. Uh, we will ask that our assistant uh, secretary uh, for Senate resolution number 32, if we would read this answer in its entirety, honoring our Joy Bauer. Senate resolution number 32, sponsored by Senator McBride, Senators Benini, Brown, Cloutier, Del Colo, Ennis, Hansen, Hawker, Lawson, Lockman, Lopez, McDowell, Pardee, Petty John, Poor, Richardson, Sicola, Sturgeon, Townsend, Walsh, and Wilson. Honoring Joy C. Bauer, Secretary of the Senate, upon her retirement after 32 years of distinguished service to the Delaware State Senate. Whereas Joy C. Bauer joined the staff of the Delaware State Senate on the fifth day of January 1988 and was named to the permanent Senate staff on the first day of April, 1989. And whereas during her early years with the Senate, Joy performed a number of different functions, including those of bill clerk, secretary receptionist, journal clerk, calendar clerk, and tribute clerk. And whereas she was named assistant secretary of the Senate on the first day of August, 2003, working with 
Senate Secretary Bernard J. Brady. And whereas Joy was elected Secretary of the Senate on the eighth day of January 2019 and has performed the duties of her office ably and well ever since. And whereas Joy first came to Legislative Hall as an eighth grade student when her mother, Patricia Ament, was a member of the staff of the first the Senate and then the Legislative Council and has thus been a member in good standing, what we have come to think as the Legislative Hall family for much of her life. And whereas her own children, Tara and Justin, followed in their mother's and grandmother's tradition and spent many happy hours during their own childhood and youth at Legislative Hall, where both served as per diem members of the staff at times during their lives. And whereas throughout her years among us, Joy has ever been ready to be of help to one and all and has not hesitated to serve anyone who has needed help, regardless of political affiliation or status, being a true friend to all. And whereas as she prepares to depart to a well-earned retirement, we look back over her time with us and marvel at how rapidly the years have flown by. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate of the 150th General Assembly of the State of Delaware, that the members do hereby wish a fond farewell to our dear friend, Joy C. Bauer, as she prepares to retire from the duties she has held with such absolute dependability, skill, quiet friendliness, extending to her our heartfelt best wishes for a long, happy and healthy retirement. Madam President, this concludes the reading of Senate Resolution Number 32 in its entirety. Thank you, uh, Mr. Assistant uh, Secretary. Um, I know that's hard for you and many of us to hear uh, read in this evening. Um, it is my understanding that uh, an official duty is necessary that we actually need to hear from the Secretary as she reads a letter, is that correct? And while we're doing that, I know our governor is still not with us and longing on, so we will continue to proceed um, until such time. Madam President, a communication from the Office of the Secretary. Communication from the Office of the Secretary of the Senate, dated Thursday, the 23rd of April, 2020. To the Senate members of the 150th General Assembly, this communication was to be announced to the members of the Senate and afterwards read during the session Thursday, the 19th of March. Adaptations to the restrictions resulting from the crisis which erupted and is currently affecting in our state and country prevented such. Through this letter, I'm announcing my intention to retire as Secretary of the Senate effective at the close of the 31st of July, 2020. The 1st of April, 2020 marked my 31st year of full-time service to the Senate. I first came to Legislative Hall January, 1988 and have served in several positions since for near to 17 of those years in the office of the secretary. Needless to state, Legislative Hall has filled the major portion of my years. There are many fond memories to take along. Having given much thought, my decision was difficult, yet maybe for the best. Thinking, thanking the Senate members, past and present, for years of trust and support, I am sincerely yours, Joyce C. Bauer, Secretary of the Senate. Madam President, this concludes the reading of the communication from the Secretary of the Senate. Thank you, Mr. Assistant Secretary. At this time, I will turn to um, Senator uh, McBride Madam President, uh, thank you. I know there are some members that would like to make comments, so I would at this time ask them to come forward and uh, make their comments, please. So noted. Senator Cloutier, we will start with you, ma'am, and you will need to unmute, please. Thank you. Joy, I want to thank you for being my Sunday memorial friend. And even if I needed one in three or four hours, we managed to, you managed to get it done and getting it, get it to me. So a lot of other stories that we can keep to ourselves and uh, I will miss you terribly. And I hope we can all still remain friends 
Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, at this time, we will uh, hear from, in this order, Senator McDowell, Senator Petty John, Senator Lawson, and Senator Walsh. Senator McDowell. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, uh, it's a uh, very uh, special uh, for me to be able to speak here, particularly with myself leaving and Joy leaving. I, uh, I just have to say what a perfect person uh, Joy has been to be our Secretary of the Senate, uh, particularly since she had such big shoes to fill when she left. But um, she's done a marvelous job and um, uh, I am so happy for her that she's retiring happy. Um, I wish I could take away the, uh, the shoulder problem mm -hmm. injury she had so that she's uh, free of uh, pain. And, uh, uh, but I, I have to say about Joy, the person, not the Secretary of the Senate, because that's what she is. She's a marvelous person. She not only has a smile that can just, like you had 10 cups of coffee, that you, that you needed, it lights up everything around it. And um, then you realize that that's only the beginning because uh, she exudes warmth of friendship. She exudes the uh, ability to understand uh, your problems and your situations, never get flustered and, and deal with them. Joy, um, I'm almost sorry I'm not going to be here to miss you, but I will miss you anyway. Uh, God bless you. Everybody loves you. And I hope you have a, a great and happy retirement. Thank you, Senator McDowell. And uh, then we will go to Senator uh, Petty John, Lawson, and Walsh, Poor, and Townsend. And our governor um, has joined us at this time, Senator McBride, so that you're aware. Senator Petty John. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, Joy, you are one of the kindest most genuine people that I've ever met. Um, in my eight years of being here in the Senate, I have relied on you for so many things. Um, before I was a Senator and was there in Legislative Hall for my other job, uh, I remember meeting you and, and, and talking to you about things, both you and Bernard. And your presence is going to be missed tremendously. Uh, in that chamber. Uh, but as your predecessor, uh, I'm sure you'll find your way into Legislative Hall more than once when we're in session. And, and in those times that you find yourself in Legislative Hall, uh, as long as I'm there, you know that my door will always be open for you. Uh, I'll always have a cup of coffee. I'll always have some candy for you. I will always be there whenever you need to come in and, and say hi. Joy, thank you so much for everything. Thank you, Senator Petty John. Uh, then Senator Lawson, Washport, Townsend, and Richardson. Senator Lawson. Thank you, Madam President. Joy, your friendship is, is just absolutely outstanding. I, I you you when I first came in. 10 years ago, you were there to smile and help me work it through. And that friendship, at least I feel, is just phenomenal. And, and it's something that I think everybody in here feels. It, you're not a friend of one, you're a friend of all. And you've taken care of us all. You've babysat us, you've changed, well, we won't go there. But uh, <laughs> you've made sure we had the appropriate clothing, uh, even to that point. Uh, I came in one time and I needed a tie and you jumped right up and made sure I had one and those kind of things. So you just look after all of us and uh, you will be missed, but I'm so glad you live in the 15th Senatorial District. I will see you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Lawson. Uh, after next is Senator Walsh and their hands who have also gone up are um, Senator Brown and Sokola 
Hansen and Lachman. I think we're going to have no shortage of commentary. Senator Walsh, please. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, struggling a little bit here with my internet connection, so we'll see how this goes. But uh, I know, as Senator Cloutier said, Julie, you've been uh, on a moment's notice with the Senate tributes and the Senate uh, memorials. Uh, we, we put a lot of pressure on you with those to the last minute, and you've uh, you've been there to get those out for us. You've had you had some really, and you've done a great job. And I know uh, it, you're not just a secretary of the Senate, but you're a friend. And I know I've had a lot of laughs. As you know, I like to joke around a lot. And I've had a lot of laughs with you at the podium, both before and after session. So uh, definitely going to miss you. I wish you the best of luck in your, in your future endeavors. And uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you in the last four years. So uh, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Senator Walsh. And now we'll proceed to uh, Senator Poor, followed by Senator Townsend, Richardson, Brown, Sokola, Hansen, and then Lachman. Senator Poor. Thank you, Madam President. Joy, so the theme is gonna be the same. I think you're gonna hear a lot of the same things from everyone. Um, as a newly elected Senator walking into this huge building and just trying to figure out where to make your mark. Um, there was nothing better than to see your beautiful smile and just the guidance that you gave. And it didn't matter who you were, you were just always there. Um, I think what I am going to miss most is uh, calling you on the fly to have you help me fill out something. Um, but more importantly, being able to look up to the podium and you and I having the eye signals to know that one of us has a job to do and, and whose turn it would be. Um, but you were a, a, are a great partner in uh, making this job very easy for me. So thank you for everything that you have done and you will be missed, but I certainly know that um, you know, your son and daughter are, are going to be able to get their mom back on a full-time basis, but more importantly, you get to enjoy your grandchild. So uh, wishing you the best of retirement because you certainly deserve it. Thank you, Senator Port. Um, next, we'll go to Senator Townsend. And in the meantime, Senator Del Colo and Senator Ennis's hands went up. So we'll go to Senator Townsend, please. Hi, Joy. Um, I didn't really prepare anything because I don't want to. I don't don't want this to happen. Um, but obviously, if you're happy, then I will find a way to be happy. Um, but but coming in and uh, and you and Bernard from the from the from the go were fantastic all the way to literally being the two witnesses who, in the dark of night, basically came down to Georgetown to observe the wedding ceremony that that Liliana and I had to throw together very quickly, uh, so we could ha have health insurance coverage for her after an injury months before we were supposed to have our, our official ceremonies and you and Bernard, uh, you know, were the two that we thought that's exactly who we want to have be witnesses to anything we have going on well in life. Um, and that just, I think in so many ways represents uh, what you've meant to us. Um, and it's been an adjustment, obviously, the past couple of years with, with Bernard having transitioned and this comes too soon. Um, but, uh, but again, if you're happy, then we will find a way to be happy. Uh, and, and you are, you and Bernard together, but individually, and that's what's so beautiful about it. It's not just the two of you together, it's somehow individually as well. You two really are too good to be true, um, too good to be true. Uh, and therefore we are, we are not worthy um, of you, but we are so blessed to have been able to, to be part of your life, your life um, these past years. So thank you so, so very much. Uh, and please do not at all in any way, shape or form become a stranger. Thank you so much, Joy. Thank you, Senator Townsend. And again, we'll proceed to Senator Richardson. Senator Richardson. Joy, I don't want to see you leave. Simple as that. When I first came here, like a lot of some of the other senators has said, you know, you enter this building and you don't know what to expect. But met, meeting you and Bernard as the first two people I met here, I just thought you, you gave me such a peace about this uh, new part of my life. And um, every time, and again, uh, like S Senator Poor said, uh, helping with paperwork, you know, when, you know, you, you're supposed to fill out the forms, but hadn't taken the time to do it. And sometimes you do things last minute and you were always there to help. 
I just appreciate you so much. I just, um, knowing that you're serving both the, the Democrats and the Republicans, but there was never any sign of any partisanship, just a peaceful feeling when, when you're in your presence. So I'll miss you and I hope you do stop by and see us again. God bless. Thank you, Senator Richardson. Next, we'll go to Senator uh, Brown, then Sicola, Hanson, Lachman, Del Colo, and then Ennis. Senator Brown. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Joy, I will try to be better tonight than I did when we had the conversation about your retirement, where I selfishly did not want you to leave uh, and celebrate uh, tonight your, your uh, decision to, to retire. Um, as a young political pup, you and Bernard have always been kind to me um, in my relationship with uh, Senator Margaret Rose Henry. Uh, in many days uh, during this 150th session, I've said to Christella that I miss Bernard, and I have no doubt in 151st that I'll be saying to Christella again, I miss Joy. Uh, because of your longevity, uh, sometimes people would take you for granted, but it's really a compliment. Uh, the compliment is that you've been consistent. The compliment is that you've always been someone to count on. The compliment is that you've always been there. Uh, and so as you've done that for us in the Delaware State Senate and within the Delaware General Assembly, uh, you've also done that with your family and you deserve you know, to celebrate your retirement with your family or to continue to be consistent and to be there for them as much as you've been there for us. So congratulations. Thank you, Senator Brown. We'll proceed to Senator Dave Sicola. Joy, I've always said you had the perfect name. Uh, <laughs> uh, that shoe fits and there's no question that uh, it's been an honor to, to serve and work with you for the last 30 years. Um, you're always professional and you are always pleasant and uh, I'm just so thrilled uh, for you that you'll be uh, leaving on your terms. And uh, I, I, it's just an honor to have worked with you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Sicola. Next, we'll proceed to Senator Hansen. Thank you, Joy, so much for, for being there for all of us and taking care of us, because there are some of us who need more taken care of than others who are new or just trying to you know, figure out the ropes as we go along. And you're, you're always so kind and so genteel and no matter how, how topsy-turvy things get, you know, I know that I can always call you and you'll be there to help me because you, you always are. So you deserve a quiet, fun, peaceful retirement and we're gonna be wishing you um, great times and happy thoughts. So congratulations, and I'm sure we'll see you again soon. Thank you, uh, Senator Hansen. And we'll proceed here in a moment to Senator Lachman. We also will be hearing um, from Senators Del Calo, Annis Wilson, and Pardee in that order. Senator Lachman. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> Joy, I think I, I'm with everyone else and that when we got that phone call from you, about your retirement, my reaction was, oh no, um, you're the only secretary I've known as, as a senator. And I can't thank you enough for all the warmth and, and the knowledge that you brought to your role that's enriched um, you know, our lives and our ability to do our work. So thank you for keeping us in order. Um, and as uh, Senator Sapola said, you are one of the most aptly named uh, people I've ever met. Uh, so congratulations on your retirement, and I look forward to, to seeing, seeing you uh, come back and visit us in the future. Thanks. Thank you, Senator Lachman. At this time, to Senator Del Calo. Thank you, Madam President. Joy, I really have to make sure that the people who um, I know are listening to us, the people at home, as they say, realize that the job that you've performed doesn't entail anything resembling a nine to five. And I can probably look back if I wanted to at my phone records and see all the times that you've reached out just to me after what most people would call quitting time to make sure that whatever needed to be done was done. And it's that level of commitment and dedication 
that in addition to your demeanor and all the other wonderful things that people have said about you that make will make your not being here uh, so difficult almost to comprehend. And I think that the other thing I want folks to know about you is that at least for me, by virtue of having your support and when Bernard was here, your and Bernard's support, really that allows us to kind of do what we do down here. By virtue of being there and doing what you do, you allow us to focus on the important work of voting on bills and addressing policy. But the magic really wouldn't happen without someone like you doing what you do to such an excellent and admirable level, really. I mean, you're, you're instrumental and indispensable to what we do down here. And I can't thank you enough for making the time that I've had so far in the Senate such a uh, enjoyable experience and, and I wish you well and you will be deeply missed. Thank you, Senator Del Callo. At this time, we'll go to Senator Ennis. Senator Ennis, you are on mute. If you have, there you are, sir, go ahead. Uh, Joy, you had large shoes to fill and uh, you filled them as Secretary of the Senate, certainly with the distinction and attention to detail. Uh, congratulations, Joy. We're going to miss you in the Senate, and we're going to miss your dedication. As you know, you have a standing invitation for annual crab piece. You know that. So we're going to miss you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Ennis. Next, we'll go to Senator Wilson and Senator Pardee. Senator Wilson. And where did Senator Wilson go? The joys of the virtual world. We do not hear you, Senator Wilson. We will, Senator Wilson, you need to unmute yourself. There you are, sir. Oh. Senator Wilson, you remuted your, you remuted yourself, sir. Stay right there. Go, <laughs> Senator Wilson. Oh. Thank you, Madam President. It's truly been an honor to be a part of the Senate with you there. I can honestly say all the times and efforts that you've spent with uh, with me since I was a senator, uh, you know, all the memorials and tributes that you've seen got done in a timely manner. And uh, I just want you to realize that my office door is always open. You'll have to learn to share with Bernard because he has uh, the opportunity to stop in and see me from time to time. And I hope you'll do the same. I wish you the best in everything that you endeavor to do and a happy retirement. Thank you for everything you've done for Dave Wilson. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Wilson. Now to Senator Pardee, please. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, any, so any of you who had the opportunity to attend vacation Bible school as a, as a young person remembers the refrain from the popular song, you know, which was, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. And I just want to say to Joy, thank you uh, for helping my transition from the House to the Senate. Um, you know, your advice and guidance and kindness along the way, um, very much appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator Pardee. And uh, Senator Hocker, your hand had gone up, sir. Thank you, Joy, for what you've meant to me as a Senator. You like everybody else has said, you did have big shoes to fill and you've done that very well. And you've been such a help there, you know, whenever anybody needed you. And as you've heard here from all the rest of us, no one wants to see you go, but we all wish you the best in your retirement. And if you're ever down the far end of Delaware in Sussex County, please stop in. Thanks and we wish you the best. Senator Bonini. Love you, Joy. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Senator Benini. And for those who are listening, and Senator Benini often has technology issues. His voice has been validated. I do not see other comments at this time. And um, certainly, um, we are going to go to Senator McBride. Joy and I have had a chance to have words earlier. And I know later when our governor, who has joined us, who's indicated he wanted to speak after we do both 
Joy and Senator Harris McDowell will tell you that those of us who sit behind the desk of our secretary cannot do this without them. And so Joy, you're gonna be so greatly missed and uh, that's all I'll have to say for the moment. Senator McBride, to you. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, uh, I'll be brief, the hour's late. Um, Joy is a very humble person as we all know. And uh, I'm going to tell you a very quick little story and then I'm done. Joy and I have uh, gone around and around for the last month. She begged me, begged me not to do this, not to do a resolution for her. And so Joy, I thank you for finally caving in to my request. Everyone loves you. They know they want to say nice things about you and we're all going to miss you. And thank you so very much for what you do. And uh, I do remember meeting you when your mom used to bring you to the legislative hall. And uh, if the term, the apple never falls far from the tree, it's very uh, appropriate for you and your mother. God bless you and I love you, see you. All right, I'm back to you, Madam President, for a roll call. Madam. Madam President. Yes. At this time, I wish to thank the members of the Senate for their kind thoughts this night. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Madam Secretary, would you kindly call roll on Senate Resolution 32? Senator Benini. Yes. Yes. Senator Brown. Yes. Yes. Senator Coutier. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Polo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Yes. Yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. Yes. Yes. Senator Lawson. Yes. Yes. Senator Lockman. Yes. Yes. Senator Lopez. Yes. Yes. Senator McBride. Yes. Yes. Senator McDowell. Yes. Yes. Senator Pardee. Yes. Yes. Senator Pettyjohn. Yes. Yes. Senator Poor. Yes. Yes. Senator Richardson. Yes. Yes. Senator Sicola. Joyfully, yes. Yes. Senator Sturgeon. Yes. Yes. Senator Townsend. Very bittersweet, yes. Yes. Senator Walsh. Yes. Yes. Senator Wilson. Yes. Yes. Madam President, the roll call on Senate Resolution 3221, yes. Oh, having received the required sufficient number of votes, Senate Resolution number 32 declared passed the Senate. And for those who did not see, we had our senior secretary give a joyful hug. <laughs> Senator Poor, back to you. Thank you, Madam President. At this time, I'm going to yield back to Senator McBride. Senator McBride. Thank you, Madam President. This time, I'd like to request that Senate Resolution number 44 be brought before the Senate and read in its entirety, please. Mr. Assistant Secretary, would you kindly read in in the entirety Senate Resolution number 44? Senate Resolution number 44, sponsored by Senator McBride, Senators Benini, Brown, Cloutier, Del Colo, Ennis, Hansen, Hawker, Lawson, Lockman, Lopez, McDowell, Pardee, Pettyjohn, Poor, Richardson, Sicola, Sturgeon, Townsend, Walsh, and Wilson. Honoring Delaware's senior senator, the Honorable Harris Brown McDowell III, upon his retirement from the Senate after some 44 years of service. Whereas Harris B. McDowell III was first elected to the Delaware State Senate to represent the first Senate district in 1976, defeating popular former Republican State Representative Kermit Justice in a race seen as something of an upset. 
the previous incumbent having been Republican Senator Michael N. Castle. And whereas in becoming a Delaware State Senator, Harris B. McDowell III was following in a long family tradition, having been preceded in the Senate by his grandfather, Middletown veterinarian, Dr. Harris Brown McDowell Sr., who served in the 102nd and 103rd General Assemblies from 1922 to 1926, and his father, Harris B. McDowell Jr., who served in the 112th and 113th General Assemblies from 1942 to 1946, before going on to serve as Delaware's Secretary of State during the first term of Governor Albert N. Carville, and then serving five terms as Delaware's lone U.S. Congressman. And whereas both our Senator McDowell and his father served in the present Senate chamber at Legislative Hall, while the first Senator of that name, Harris B. McDowell Sr., served in the old Senate chamber in the old State House on the Dover Green. And whereas over his many years among us, Senator McDowell and his remarkable wife, Sunyi, and their children, Kendall and Harris IV, have become greatly beloved members of what we often think of as the Legislative Hall family. Kendall and Harris growing up to become fine young adults. And whereas throughout his time in the Senate, Senator McDowell has shown both a hands-on stick to and a love of, for people and especially for people with special needs which may perhaps be best exemplified by a 1984 Wilmington Morning News column by Bill Frank entitled, Help for the Handicapped Citizen, in which Frank recounts the story of how Senator McDowell was contacted on primary day by a wheelchair bound voter trying to get access to cast a ballot at a polling place at Wilmington's Emanuel Episcopal Church. And whereas the man unable to get his wheelchair up the steps into the building to vote and not getting any help from election officials to make this possible, other than having them offer to have him carried bodily into the building, which solution he found demeaning and unacceptable, contacted Senator McDowell, who after striking out with election officials himself, Contacted, contacted the rector of the church at his home in nearby Pennsylvania and got his permission to build a temporary ramp into the building. And whereas the senator got an architect friend to sketch a design for a simple ramp to be mounted on the church steps and then found a carpenter friend who was building a home in the neighborhood from whom he borrowed lumber, nails, hammer, and saw and proceeded with help from other friends to build a ramp to which the voter then used to access the building to cast his vote with appropriate independence and dignity, after which Senator McDowell dismantled the ramp and vowed to take the matter to the General Assembly the following January and get legislation to prevent similar occurrences in the future. And whereas this story is so wonderfully typical of the independent free spirit, creativity and sincerity of this remarkable man who has accomplished so much during his nearly four and a half decades in the Senate. From leading efforts to establish a separate Department of Services for children, youth, and their families, and working to establish the seed and inspire college tuition grant programs for Delaware high school graduates. And whereas this statesman of such great vision led efforts in 2007 to establish the Delaware Sustainable Energy Utility as a unique nonprofit organization offering a one-stop resource through its Energize Delaware initiative to help residents and businesses save money through clean energy and efficiency, frequently at little or no cost, becoming the first such body in the United States and now being replicated in several other communities around the world. And whereas in recent years, Senator McDowell has served as chair of the Senate Finance Committee and as co-chair of the Joint Finance Committee, helping to manage state finances ably and well, and not incidentally, dealing at the twilight of his Senate career with what is certainly one of the greatest financial challenges ever to face our state 
in our nation, the economic downturn caused by the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate of the 150th General Assembly of the State of Delaware, that the members do hereby wish a fond farewell to our dear friend, Harris B. McDowell III, as he prepares to retire from the duties he has held with such spirit and vision and dedication as Delaware's first district state senator, where he has been a friend and an inspiration to many of us, both in the Senate and in the larger community, expressing the hope that he and his dear wife, Sun Yi, will enjoy many years of peaceful retirement and happiness and in health. Be it further resolved that a suitable copy of this resolution be presented to Senator McDowell upon its passage. Madam President, this concludes the reading of Senate Resolution Number 44 in its entirety. Thank you, Mr. Assistant Secretary. At this time, we'll go back to our Senate Pro Tem, Senator McBride. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, uh, before we proceed any further, just let me explain the rules, if you will, uh, as a refresher course. You know, the Constitution requires us to complete our regular session by June 30th. So at 11.55, we are going to have to adjourn the session. And then at midnight, we will go into a special session and of the 150th General Assembly. Uh, I know there are members obviously who wanna make remarks and so forth. So the plan would be at 11.55, the uh, majority leader would take over and uh, convene and complete the regular session of the 150th, and then we'll go into special session. I, uh, I know a number of members had an opportunity to make comments last year, but I'm sure they wanna make comments again. And so I'll turn the floor back to you, Madam President, for uh, comments from the members. Thank you, uh, Senator McBride. Always nice to have the June 30 virtual reminders. Senator Lawson was first to raise his hand. Senator Lawson. Thank you, Madam President. Harris, I wish you the very best. It's been great working with you. And uh, just again, I wish you the very best. And if there's anything I can ever do or you care to talk or stop back in, I'd love to visit with you. Take care, sir. Senator Ennis. Senator Ennis, you have to unmute, sir. Thank you, Madam President. Um, my young friend, Harris B. McDowell III, um, is retiring at the end of the second session of the 150th General Assembly. Now, between the two of us, uh, I imagine that we've seen about everything there is to offer in the General Assembly. Um, Senate, Harris entered the, uh, the Senate in 1976, and I entered the House in 1982. Public service as in many forms, as you know. While many of you know that I was a uh, former trooper, also Air National Guardsman and volunteer fireman, far fewer people know that Harris isn't just a, a longtime state senator, but he also was a volunteer in the US Marine Corps for over six years at the onset of the Vietnam War. Harris is a very humble person at times, but today I ask all of you to join me in thanking him for his many years of distinguished service, not only to the state, but to the nation. He has earned uh, as much respect and gratitude as anyone. I have been privileged to serve with Harris and I wish him a very happy retirement. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Ennis. Um, in this order, we have members, Senator Townsend, Senator Poor, Senator Walsh, Senator Hansen, and I'm sure more will raise their hands. Senator Townsend. Thank you, Madam President Harris. We're on the clock, so I will be very brief. It was an honor to sit next to you for my first two years um, in the back row there. Little did I know that was probably the most influential seat in the General Assembly to get your ear for 30 seconds on June 30th you can move mountains. Um, I know that you're not going very far uh, because you still have, not only because you know where all the bodies are buried, but 
also because you have so many ideas that a person of your heart and values and, and, and intellect, you've got ideas still going about what you want to achieve. And I, I can speak, I think, for the entire caucus and saying we look forward to helping you achieve them. Um, it truly, truly has been an honor. I would love to say a whole lot more, but time is short. Uh, so I look forward to a couple of Heinegans with you uh, whenever it is appropriate to do so. Thank you, Harris. Senator Poor. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I feel like I have a ton to say, but I know that we're on a short time limit, so I'll be quick. Um, you know, Harris, I don't know anyone that works as hard or as diligently as you do, um, and which is probably why you are not only the longest serving state legislature, le legislator in Delaware, um, but you're also the longest serving elected official in any office. And that is just, that is something that I'm not sure anyone will ever, ever be able to meet or beat. Um, but a couple of things that I think I'm most proud of the work that you have done and just in the years that I got to sit next to you, even though you've caused me some great um, stress at times um, by pulling me into some of your charades. Um, but you know, the fact that you were instrumental in the creation of the Department of uh, Services for Children, Youth and Their Families just is unbelievable because you didn't let a child be abandoned abused or neglected because you knew that we needed to have a focus in this area. And then years later, the design of the SEED scholarship program, where you said that every child should have an opportunity to be able to go to college. These are things that not any one of us <clears throat> can take away from you um, and all of your hard work and your diligence in making sure that our kids were taken care of. Um, I'm going to reflect and try not to cry um, because I was a 34 year old mom with a child with special needs and all I wanted was him to be accepted and I showed up at Representative DePinto's home at eight o'clock in the morning and you were sitting there. And I remember thinking, this guy better be able to do something for me and had no clue really who you were. And I'm gonna fast forward to 2015 when someone was cleaning your office, that nice clean office was straightening maybe some paperwork for you. And they found a note in your drawer of me calling you back in 2003, begging you for help. So all those years ago, you were instrumental in my life and only to come around in 2012 that I would be sitting in the back row with you and then sharing some time with you um, with Hershey Kisses and anything else that I could ply you with so that you, way you could teach me everything that I needed to know how to be a good legislator and to make sure that I always saw the kids first. So I wanna thank you for your mentor, mentoring that you've given me over the years, um, the time that we've spent on joint finance and uh, just the support. You are going to truly be missed. And um, I wish you well in your retirement. You certainly deserved. Thank you, Senator Poor. Uh, we have in this order, Senators Walsh, Hansen, Lockman Brown and Senator Porez, I know you indicated as well, Senator McBride, we will be completing our session at approximately 1156 and we don't want any members to feel rushed. Our governor has indicated that he will be staying until the end of all of our comments. So we will be able to proceed into the special session for remarks uh, for our special statesman that we're honoring now, um, Senator Walsh. Thank you, Madam President, and I'll be brief. Um, I know uh, 1976, Harris, you were first elected, so you're the bicentennial senator. Now retiring in 2020, we're in the midst of a pandemic, which is made your finest, final session virtual. So who would have known that, right? Harris, you're a man of honesty, integrity, knowledge, and the four short years 
that we served together. I've always valued your opinion on matters because I knew you would never steer me wrong. I'll definitely miss sitting in the back row these last two years with you and will always be honored for having served with you during this time. I applaud all the work that you've done with the SE, SEU, Dell Tech, the SEED program, J Definitely proud to call you a friend and will sorely miss you in that back row. And I, uh, I'm definitely gonna miss you at the Delaware Park functions, that's for sure. These last four years we have tended together. So while this chapter of your journey closes, I wish you all the best in your next chapter. Thank you, Senator Walsh. Next, we'll proceed to Senator Hansen. I also, for members who've had an issue, I know with some technology, uh, Senators Richardson and Cloutier, we have you down as uh, speaking as well. Senator Hansen. Thank you. Um, you know, Senator McDowell, you have got to be one of the most kind-hearted, principled men with such great social conscience. And I have, I've been, it's been an honor to observe with you. Um, I haven't learned nearly enough from you. I've enjoyed every day that we have served together. And um, I look forward to meeting you outside of Legislative Hall, and I'm sure calling upon you many times in the future. You know, 1976 was a long time ago, and you've, been, you've seen a lot of things. You know, Jimmy Carter was our president in 1996. The Blues Brothers made their debut on SNL in 1976. This, Laverne and Shirley made their debut, as well as Family Feud, The Gong Show, and Charlie's Angels, which must have, some of those, some probably sounded like the Senate back in, back in the day. Um, Pete DuPont was our governor. Um, Tom Carper was our treasurer in 1976, and uh, Ruth Ann Minner was the state representative. Um, you also watched Sussex County go from Democrat, which was really quite Democrat in 1976, to much more Republican now. And sort of the opposite happened in Newcastle County, which was far more Republican at that time and is more Democratic now. So you've seen, you've seen a lot over that period of time. And um, you have a lot of wisdom about you and I am truly going to miss serving with you and I wish you well and um, retirement and, and happiness and great things in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Hansen. Um, as we are monitoring the hour, uh, we have time, uh, I believe for Senator Lachman um, for a few sure. minutes of comment. Thank you, I'll be quick. Um, Senator McDowell, I just wanted to say, I feel a little cheated. I'm one of those, as I think has been mentioned, who as a freshman senator hit the jackpot of being able to sit next to you on the floor. And, um, you know, COVID has intervened, so we missed out on some of that this year. Um, but that time that we did spend meant a lot to me, uh, exchanging Hershey kisses and getting to hear your commentary, um, even that others didn't get to hear. Uh, one of my favorite memories with you, I think, as anyone knows, when you get into a conversation about policy with you, you have such a wealth of knowledge and experience. It just sort of, it goes big. And, and we were talking about public transit one day in my office and you popped over to yours and came back with this bright yellow uh, volume of a report you commissioned in the 80s with a big train on the front and says passenger rail potentials. And I was so thrilled that you let me borrow that. It still sits on top of my inbox. Um, in Dover and as a reminder to me of all the pioneering work you've done, um, the massive shoes that we all have to fill, I think as legislators to um, keep your legacy uh, held up and going. And so, so I hope you'll let me keep it. And, and even if you don't, I, I just wanna thank you so much for your example uh, and your friendship, which I look forward to continuing for years to come. So congratulations on your retirement. Thank you Madam very President. much. Senator McBride. Thank you, Madam President. This time I'd like to request that Senate uh, Resolution Number 44 be laid on the table. Senate Resolution uh, 44 is laid on the table and we will return in special session to honor our fine statesman, statesman uh, Harris McDowell. At this time, Senator Poor, I shall turn to you, ma'am. Thank you, Madam President. This time I move the second session of the Senate of the 150th General Assembly Stand adjourned.
The second session of the 150th General Assembly stands adjourned. At this time, do we have a special communication, I believe, uh, from the Speaker of the House and myself that I would like to respectfully re request be read in by our Assistant Secretary. To members of the 150th General Assembly, from Bethany A. Hall Long, Lieutenant Governor of the State of Delaware, and Peter C. Schwartzkopf, Speaker of the House of Representatives. Date, July 1st, 2020. Pursuant to the provisions of Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution of the State of Delaware of 1897 as amended, we hereby declare the 150th General Assembly of the State of Delaware in special session. Signed, Bethany A. Hall Long, Lieutenant Governor and President of the Senate, and Peter C. Schwartzkopf, Speaker of the House of Representatives. Madam President, this concludes the reading of the communication from the Lieutenant Governor and the Speaker of the House of the Representatives. Thank you so very much as we have entered into this special session in special times under the virtual uh, reality that we are in. At this time, what I would like to do is um, offer um, up a word of prayer, and then we'll be asking uh, members to uh, join us in the pledge. So if you would kindly um, take an attitude of prayer uh, for the newer members, this does seem like we just did this not long ago, but this is when we go into a special session. So join me, please, no matter your faith or your background, let's take a moment. Um, and during this prayer, I do want to indicate that I want to um, start before I pray at the request of Senator Ennis and other members who had the wonderful opportunity of working with the late Representative Donald Clark. Jeff Clark's father, we know, had lived a full abundant 96 years. He passed away this past week. And uh, we did prepare um, a memoriam in his honor. And he was certainly a wonderful man of Kenton, someone who contributed very much to Delaware um, as a businessman. And many of you have, I know, great stories. So I'd like to start um, with a moment of honor for the departure of our honorable Donald Clark, and then I will offer prayer. So let's take a moment honoring this fine statesman. Amen. As we come together today in this special session during this period of time in our country and our state of the global pandemic, those things that have seemed insurmountable, we have comprehensively come together. And we know we turn to our faith in these times that we have the leadership here in the Delaware Senate. And we also know we have great servants, whether our National Guard and those serving around the country, keeping our freedoms. May we come together in unification as was offered earlier in prayer by Senator Lopez that started our session. We have so much more that unifies us than divides us. And turning to biblical scriptures, whether in Ephesians or Matthew, and how we bring together and take away divisiveness, and we come together during these times to give to many for those of us who have much. So in this attitude of prayer, as we join this special session, honoring many who serve Delaware, we thank you and we look forward to the service of many in the next months ahead as we face the pandemic. Be with us, guide us, and lead us now as we turn to the pledge. Amen. Please join me now in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Secretary, please call attendance, roll call, and our special session. Senator Benini. Still here. Here. Senator Brown. Present. Present. Senator Plutier. Present. Present. Senator Del Colo. Present. Present. Senator Ennis. Here. Here. Senator Hansen. Here. 
Here. Senator Hawker. Present. Present. Senator Lawson. Present. Present. Senator Lachman. Here. Here. Senator Lopez. Here. Here. Senator McBride. Here. Here. Senator McDowell. Again. Here. Here. Senator Pardee. Here. Here. Senator Pettyjohn. Present. Present. Senator Poor. Here. Here. Senator Richardson. Present. Present. Senator Sokola. Here. Here. Senator Sturgeon. Here. Here. Senator Townsend. Here. Here. Senator Walsh. Present. Present. Senator Wilson. Present. Present. Madam President, the attendance roll call, 21 present. The quorum being present, the uh, special session of the 150th General Assembly, this first day of July. Uh, we are now convened. Uh, Madam Secretary, minutes please of the previous day. Uh, June 30th, 2020. Senator Poor. Thank you, Madam President. I move so much be considered the reading of the minutes. So moved. Senator Poor. Thank you, Madam President. At this time, I yield back to Senator McBride. Senator McBride. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, this time I request that Senate Resolution Number 44 be lifted from the table. Mr. Madam Secretary, please lift uh, Senate Resolution Number 44 from the table and if our assistant secretary will read briefly through the title of the resolution, we will resume, resume uh, dialogue. Mr. Assistant Secretary. Senate resolution number 44, sponsored by Senator McBride, Senators Benini, Brown, Cloutier, Del Colo, Ennis, Hansen, Hawker, Lawson, Lockman, Lopez, McDowell, Pardee, Pettyjohn, Poor, Richardson, Sicola, Sturgeon, Townsend, Walsh, and Wilson. Honoring Delaware's senior senator, the Honorable Harris Brown McDowell III, upon his retirement from the Senate after some 44 years of service. Madam President, this concludes the reading of Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 44 by title only. Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 44 before the Senate. Senator McBride. Madam President, uh, yesterday uh, you had a list of uh, speakers, and I believe we didn't get through all those. So. I would go you back to you for calling on those individuals. Absolutely. At this time, we are next to Senator Brown, Senator Richardson, Senator Cloutier in that order. And any other members who wish to speak will need to raise their hands. Senator Brown. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, tonight is indeed bittersweet. Uh, Senator Harris B. McDowell uh, III, I want to congratulate you on your retirement. I indeed selfishly uh, would have loved to have shared many more years with you, Delaware State Senate, uh, at least two more years uh, with you in Delaware State Senate. Uh, but I want to thank you for your commitment to our state and in particular to the city of Wilmington. Uh, and you leave very large shoes to be filled as a part of Wilmington's uh, State Senate delegation uh, to work on behalf of the citizens of the city of Wilmington. Um, many have talked about your legislative accomplishments, whether it's the SEED program uh, or INSPIRE or the creation of the Kids Department. And there's many legislators that have served in Delaware State Senate over the years. Uh, some have been as good uh, to pass through this chamber. I would argue that none has been as better. Uh, you will surely be missed by all of us and by Delaware, uh, and you stand as a giant uh, in Delaware for all of your work. Uh, for me personally, I always describe you to friends of mine as the lion of the Delaware State Senate, as our Ted Kennedy, uh, and, and in his words, for all those who ca whose cares have been our concern, the work goes on, the calls endures. The hope still lives and the dream shall never die. 
So the testament of your work is that even though you may be leaving us, we will continue your work in the Delaware State Senate, uh, grab a hold of the baton that you're passing, and it is our prayer that we will make hope in history wrong. God bless you. Thank you, Senator Brown. Next, Senator Richardson. Thank you, Madam President. Harris, it's just been a pleasure to work with you uh, on the Joint Finance Committee, and it was a pleasure to meet your wife and be able to have dinner with you. I think it was in Pittsburgh where we got to sit on a rooftop and get to know each other a little bit better. Also, the, the fact that you've been a, uh, a loyal husband for so many years is uh, touches my heart, too, because I think that's really one of the most important things that you can do in your lifetime. So I will miss you, uh, and uh, please stay in touch. I've learned something from you, and some of it was good. But uh, th thank you for being the man that you are, and we will miss you. Thank you, Senator Richardson. Senator Cloutier? Senator Cloutier, you are on mute, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Uh, Senator McDowell, I want to thank you for taking me under your wing when I entered the House of Representatives upon the death of my husband, Representative Bill Cloutier. And then through the years that we served on joint finance, I appreciate your leadership and help and my best to you and congratulations to your family. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and for some reason in my line, I am not showing the hands raised, but if uh, there are members who would like to speak, enter so in participants or wave signal to me at this time. Madam President. Yes, Senator McBride. Uh, you know, the governor is a very patient man as always, and he has been patiently <laughs> waiting. Uh, and I'm tremendously pleased that he would uh, join us this evening. Uh, before the governor speaks, I would just like to make some very, very brief comments about my very good friend Harris, if I might. You know, so, as has been mentioned, you know, he's the only legislator in Delaware history to serve 44 years in a general assembly. And I, uh, I'm gonna miss him not being here with me. His dedication to the public good and priorities of our caucus have led us forward year after year. His contributions to our state Senate, especially on energy and education will reverberate for many decades after this session concludes. He's a one of a kind Senator and public servant. Today is his last day perhaps in this extreme of chamber that we have. Tomorrow he will begin the slow and bittersweet process of exiting legislative hall, well-earned retirement. I hope uh, you will join me in making that transition a little easier by celebrating his 44 years of service to this exceptional man. And at this time, Madam President, I would like to yield to the Honorable Governor of the State of Delaware, John Carney. So moved uh, to our Honorable Governor, John C. Carney. Thank you, uh, Madam President, uh, and to Mr. Pro Tem, thank you for the invitation to join all of you tonight. It was really, frankly, a, a, a pleasure and a privilege to sit and listen to the tributes. Uh, this is, indeed is a special a session, a special night uh, as we honor and thank and celebrate three incredible members of the Senate family as a a former president of the Senate, lieutenant governor for eight years. Uh, I know Joy uh, so well. And we had a, an expression when I was in Congress because you didn't get much time to, to talk on the floor when you agreed with remarks that, uh, that others said you would say that I'd like to associate myself with the remarks of, of so-and-so gentlewoman or gentleman from whatever district. And I would like to associate myself with all the remarks made for Joy, she's just a pleasure to work with. She was a joy to work with. She and Bernard were an incredible a pair during my eight years as president of the Senate. Uh, they led me <laughs> rightly down the, the road and, and showed me the way to go with always a, 
a smile and a gentle touch. Uh, and Dave Barris and I didn't cross paths too often in person, but he and his touch was always behind a lot of the issues uh, that we dealt with. I know his father quite well. Uh, we became very good friends over the years. I was honored and privileged to know briefly his grandfather and he carries on an incredible a legacy of service to our state. We may have been on different sides uh, politically, but we were always on the same side uh, for the good of the state of, uh, of Delaware. And to my good friend Harris, who we salute right now, who has served in the Senate for 44 years, this has got to be an incredible night, a virtual session of the Senate. I got a text message earlier this evening from our good friend, Senator Nancy Cook, who said that she's been in Legislative Hall every year since 1959. So I think uh, Harris, only Senator Cook has uh, more June 30th uh, there than, uh, than you do. She said that she wanted me to take her, uh, pick her up and drive her to the hall so that she could be there once again. And if I knew Harris and the rest of you were gonna be there, I would have done just that because it's just so important to recognize somebody, a giant in the Senate as Harris has been and all the comments were right on point. His legacy when someone writes the next uh, chapter of the history of uh, the Delaware legislature, uh, they will write about the exploits of Harris B. McDowell. Uh, although this was, a, uh, this district was uh, the incumbent was uh, a Republican, Mike Castle, the first senatorial district before Harris was elected. This has been a reliable Democratic district since Harris was elected in 1976. But every four years, at least for the last 20, uh, there would be somebody in the district who thought, well, maybe Harris has served too long and people, he hasn't uh, been out knocking on doors or serve in the public and so they would challenge him in a in a primary and Harris called on me often I've been his neighbor and constituent for the last 33 years and particularly as his district was extended north to my old hometown of Claymont Harris and I would go knocking on, on doors and the fact of the matter is Harris never tired of knocking on doors of meeting his constituents, of doing the work of each individual constituent in his district. And that's why with each of those primaries that came his way over the last 20, probably close to 30 years, Harris always came on top with a wide margin because he let, never lost touch with his district. He never lost touch with ordinary citizens that, that lived in it with neighbors like me. It's been a privilege for me to call Harris a friend. When people write the history of the Senate, you know, they talk about so-and-so was the father of this program. I don't know which of the half dozen or more programs Harris would pick to become the father of, because he is the father of the kids department, has been noted. And it was a big battle with then Governor Pete DuPont to get it right. And P Harris worked so hard to get it right as Senator Poor said, because he cared so much about the children who uh, and the, the juveniles who were uh, found themselves in trouble and needed a, a second chance and needed a, a better way. He'll certainly be remembered as the father of, of renewable energy. Uh, he was for the Green New Deal before one was ever envisioned by anybody. Uh, he did and championed electricity uh, deregulation in our state created this sustainable energy utility, which as was in, uh, mentioned by several, uh, has become a model across uh, the country. He ended his career doing incredible leadership for our state as co-chair of the Joint Finance uh, Committee. And most importantly, he championed scholarships for Delaware students to the University of Delaware, Delaware Tech and the University of Delaware and ultimately to Delaware State University. I can't think of an, another member of the Delaware State Senate or a legislator who has left such an incredible mark on our state. 
and who has done so much for individuals in Delaware. And as uh, Senator Brown rightly pointed out, never lost uh, uh, touch with his district, never lost touch with bringing resources back to the city of Wilmington, uh, to Brandywine Park, uh, to all of the institutions uh, in our great city. I think he's earned his place in heaven by helping brother Ronald with all his various projects over the years, including uh, the recent years. It's been a privilege of mine to, to serve alongside of, of my good friend and Senator Harris McDowell now as governor. And uh, I wanna join all of you in paying tribute to him tonight, an incredible leader and a good friend. Thank you, Governor. We certainly appreciate your time this evening. Um, we have hands raised Senator Pardee and I wanna remind uh, Senator McDowell, I was notified by a few members this evening that they gave comments last year um, and in the interest of the hour, Colin Vanini being one, uh, wanted to reflect on last year's remarks when you announced your retirement. Senator Pardee. Thank you, Madam President. Um, as, as, uh, as, as you all know, I, I served in the House for six years before joining the Senate and during my uh, last few years in the House, I served as the House Energy Chair. And prior to being in that position, I really didn't know Harris very well, but there were a couple of occasions where I was summoned to his office because there was legislation that was gonna be in my committee and would end up in his committee. And so I would run across the building and sit in Harris's office and, and, uh, and listen to him pontificate to me about energy issues. And listen, anybody who is watching this, you may not agree with Harris on politically on, on much of anything, but I'm gonna tell you, the man is brilliant. And especially when it comes to energy issues, solar energy, renewables, I, I don't know what the man does with his free time besides just read and study those issues because I have never encountered anyone who is just such a just walking encyclopedia of knowledge when it comes to renewable energy. And he is so passionate about it. He is so incredibly knowledgeable. So you can say what you might and you might disagree with anything the man has ever said when it comes to that issue or anything else. The one thing that you can never take away from Harris McDowell is that he is a brilliant man. And I am so grateful that I had the opportunity to know him, to work with him, and to learn from him. Thank you, Harris. Uh, thank you for everything that you have taught me. I am so appreciative. Thank you. And I don't see other hands. And I know um, it was nice to have Madam, our governor's present senator. Uh, am I hearing Madam someone president. else? Yes, yeah, Senator McBride. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, at this time, on behalf of you, the presiding officer, and the fellow members of the Senate, uh, I would like to present to Harris several gifts from all of us. And I believe that his aide is there, and we're going to surprise him with a couple gifts now. James? Okay, so we're Yep, James, we're going to turn to Senator McDowell so we can see the gift presentation. Senator McDowell. I believe James is there. Is that correct? In the meantime, I. There we are. Good night. <laughs> Very 
Is it solar powered, Harris? That's a good question. <laughs> no solar jokes tonight. No solar jokes tonight. And Harris, if you could uh, display the top of that, there's an engrave, engraving oh. on, the, on the top of that. If you'd show everybody that, please. Yeah. Um, right top. If you could read that to him, Harris. I, I will. I will. Can everybody hear? Yes, they can hear you, sir. Harris B. McDowell, the third senator, state of Delaware, 1976 to 2020. That's a hell of a long time, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And there, there's another gift, Harris, that you uh, need to open from all your colleagues and the presiding officer. I, uh, Went to a lot of trouble to wrap these up. No pressure, sir. Well, I told you, I feel like I could tell a story. A deck of cards, no. Wait a minute. Just to help me get organized, finally. Wait a minute. Oh my God. Isn't that lovely? Thank you, everybody. And Thanks. Harris, if you turn if you take the watch out, there's an engrave, engraving on the back of it. Good look at that. Share that with the members. And then Madam President, maybe uh, the senator would like to say a few words. Yes, and uh, we will have you share that with us, Harris. Uh, H. B. The D. Third. Right here, June. Must be thirty. Yeah, June 30, 2020. That's tonight. Thank you, thank you, everybody. You're uh, welcome. I am. Uh, I, I am uh, thrilled. I'm, I'm not so overwhelmed. You know, last year was overwhelming when I announced my retirement, and everybody was so great. Uh, and, and boy, I bowled like a baby last year. But um, uh, so I guess that that's why I'm not feeling quite as emotional now. I'm several steps closer to real retirement. Getting looking forward to spending a lot more time with Suni, my wife, and my family, and. Uh, so that's all, all to the good. I tell you guys a little story. I think it's appropriate. Uh, what is it? Forty-four years ago, uh, I came into the Senate at the other end of the clock in January calendar, and uh, uh, I think in my very first day, I was in a squabble with leadership, and so here I am. Being consistent, you got to squabble with the leadership. So you can't say that I've changed my tune a whole lot, and uh, that's uh, that's uh, the way because I think uh, uh, somebody said about talking about legislating. They said that's what we do. We legislate. Well, sometimes we fight too, and uh, we can fight, but we can come out friends, and. Uh, I made so many friends uh, in Legislative Hall. I, I just I just couldn't tell you and how much they mean to me. But uh, I'll say to all my best friends in the in Lake Hall, in the state senate, uh, keep on fighting. Keep on fighting for what you believe in. Go for it. Whether it's uh, whether you want to fight the COVID virus virus. And uh, have a help try to do something to help people's medical needs. Whether it's uh, you want to fight for uh, uh, global uh, voting to fight against global warming, which is one of one of my issues. Whether you want to go and uh, 
fight to get better conditions and better help for the disabled community, doesn't matter. Pick your poison. Pick what you like. Pick what you care. What's your heart? Go where your heart leads you. And then be ready to fight. Stick with it. And you'll do great things. And then I, I'm looking at a lot of people who've already done great things. Already. Uh, God love you. I sure do. And uh, I will think many, many times about our service together. Service being the fitting word. I'm not going to say goodbye. I won't be around too much. I'm not built that way. And Sunni's got a lot of designs on my time, but I'll be thinking of you. And every thought will be gone. Every thought will be bring a little bit of tear. God bless you. Thank you, uh, Senator McDowell. I want to reiterate a number of members have indicated to me that they gave their words last year. And um, I know we'll turn this to Senator McBride in a moment, but uh, you really have been that legacy for many and your leadership for the marginalized will go down in record. And uh, thank you for the years of help and insight to me. Senator McBride. Madam President, at this time, I'd like to request a roll call on Senate Resolution Number Four Four. Madam Secretary, would you kindly call roll on Senate Resolution Four Four? Senator Benini. Yes. Yes. Senator Brown. Yes. Yes. Senator Coutier. Yes. Yes. Senator Del Colo. Yes. Yes. Senator Ennis. Yes. Yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Yes. Senator Hawker. Yes. Yes. Senator Lawson. Yes. Yes. Senator Lockman. Yes. Yes. Senator Lopez. Yes. Yes. Senator McBride. Yes. Yes. Senator McDowell. Yes. Yes. Senator Pardee. Yes. Yes. Senator Pettyton. Yes. Yes. Senator Poor. Yes. Yes. Senator Richardson. Yes. Yes. Senator Sokola. Yes. Yes. Senator Sturgeon. Yes. Yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Yes. Senator Walsh. Yes. Yes. Senator Wilson. Yes. Yes. Madam President, the roll call on Senate Resolution 44, 21 yes. Having received the required sufficient number of votes, Senate Resolution number 44 declared passed the Senate. Senator Orr. Thank you, Madam President. At this time, I move that the second special session of the 100. Madam President. Yes. Senator McBride. Madam President, before uh, uh, Senator Orr closes out, I, I would just want to make a few comments. You know, as the night draws on, I'd like to take a moment of everyone's time to thank all who have assured the final session days of the second half of the 150th General Assembly is a reality. We would not have reached this point realizing the closing of the regular session days of the 150th General Assembly in virtual format if it wasn't for the dedication of our legislative staff and the DTI technical support staff. 110 days ago, I made the decision to request our staff continue service off-site and close legislative hall. In those past 110 days, I, like many others in our state, have had to make difficult and trying decisions I never expected to face in my lifetime. My priority since March the 12th has been the health of our staff, our members, and the citizens of Delaware. Over three months later, I am happy to report our staff and members have remained safe and healthy. There have been many sacrifices made along the way as we learn to navigate and accept an apparent new normal. I want to thank the citizens of Delaware for adapting to our alternative format and continuing to play an active role 
in our democracy with phone calls, Zoom meetings, letters, and emails. We cannot forecast with any certainty the months ahead. Yet throughout all we have experienced, I could not be prouder to stand alongside my colleagues in virtual format this night as we close out the 150th General Assembly and prepare to forge pathward forward into the unknown. Thank you for your time, Madam President. Thank you, uh, Senator McBride. Words well, well spoken and well received and well met. Uh, such a team effort. Senator Poor, back to you. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Senator McBride, for those words. I move that this second special session of the 150th General Assembly convene in virtual format. Now stands in recess to the call of the President Pro Tem. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, this concludes our session and I am going to announce at this time uh, with a smile on my face that our Senate stands in recess to the call of the President. Pro Tem, or Senator McBride.